Hello everyone, this is Diwall20, and welcome to episode 18 of Diwall20's Let's Play series. Today, I want to make a mob farm, uh, and I want to do it in a relatively different way. I mean, some aspects will be the same as things you've seen before, because there's only so many variations of a mob farm you can get. That said, uh, I definitely want to see what kind of cool stuff we can check out that's new, so therefore we're checking out a new mod called Hyperbox. A Hyperbox is like a compact machine. So if you've played with compact machines before, the concept of a hyperbox should be familiar to you. So let's play with this bad boy and see what we can come up with. Uh, I'm probably gonna have like a good handful of hyperboxes in my basement that do different things. Oh, look at that, even a little, a little fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. That's cool, right? Isn't that cool? I wonder why you're getting different colors on top. I don't know what that means, but that's neat. Okay, cool beans, right? All right, let's place it. <laughs> now, if you open it up, uh, let's see, that is overlaying with that. So I kind of want to keep my glyphs there. I don't think I need these guys so much anymore. All right, so dimension ID and hyperbox name. So let's call it mob farm, okay. Uh, use default name for hyperbox name? Sure, mob farm. And then we can save and enter, I assume will send me into the dimension. Save and exit, I assume will just close this UI. So I'm gonna do save and exit just so you can see what that's all about, boom. Uh, and now if I right click, I'll teleport in there. Sweet. Cool. Now, how do I get out? <laughs> That's a good question. I think I right click one of those blocks up there. Okay, cool. Yeah, that works. Cool. Neato. Look at all the colors and stuff. Sweet. Now shift. Oh, there we go. Holding shift shows you, okay, the colors are the sides. Got it. Okay, figured that out. Colors and shapes for those who are colorblind. Very good. Dyer always forgets to do things for colorblind people and that makes him a bad person, but this mod developer absolutely had colorblind uh, folks in mind because as you can see, not only are the sides color coded, but they're different shapes. That's very cool. That's very cool. We should absolutely all be trying to, to do a better job with making sure uh, we're supporting those who need, who need extra help like that. So that's cool. I'm very pleased to see that. Um, so good times. Look at that, very neat mod. So we're gonna play with Hyperbox today a little bit. So what this does is it literally makes, I'm pretty sure it makes a dimension. So if we do Forge TPS, we should see Hyperbox Mob Farm, okay? So every Hyperbox gets its own dimension. I'm pretty sure Compact Machines is just all one big dimension, okay? But where in Hyperbox, you get a single cube, and that's it, one chunk. It's like a 13 by 13, right? So you can see here we're at 111, technically that over there is 000, uh, and then 13, 13, 13, and I guess 14, 14, 14 over there. So slightly smaller than one chunk. Um, and then these guys are apertures, and they allow you to import and export items through them. Um, so we're gonna play with that a little bit today and see how it works out. And I wanna create the mob farm in here. Does that sound cool? So like if I set up a powered Enderman spawner, and we did a uh, show range, that's gonna be a little bit much. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I may want that to be like there. And then how's that look for show and range? That looks pretty good. Okay. So what I'd like to do is maybe uh, encapsulate that area so that any spawning of mobs happens inside of it. Cool. And then ideally I would always like land here. And I don't know exactly how to make sure that happens, but we'll figure it out together. Uh, I'm pretty sure whatever aperture you click on is where you show up. So like I click on the blue side here and I'm gonna land closest to the blue aperture. If I click on, let's say the red side, which is the opposite, right? I should land closest to the red aperture, wherever it's safe to land, okay? So, you know, if there's blocks there, right? It should, it should place me on top of them, right? So if I click on the red aperture, I'm now standing on top of those blocks. So it finds the nearest block to the aperture you click on to teleport you to. Neato burrito, I like it. And then if we clicked on green, uh, I guess I land, oh yeah, okay, cool, that's green. That's cool, okay. And this is orangey, and that's uh, that's the roof, right? So it actually, it put me on the like up there, but then it said, nope, we don't want him to take fall damage, so that is the closest place. Okay, cool. So we'll have to, yeah, play around with the sidedness of it. I'm guessing I can rotate you. Yeah, cool. So like if I want uh, the front of the box and then I hit this, I should land nearest to the blue rectangle. Super cool. All right, so here's my plan for today. 
I would like to get um, energy into here uh, for the spawner. Okay. And uh, you know what I could do? I could put the spawner right here. Oh, nope, that's not where I want to put it. The spawner right here. And that is a purple diamondy shape. Okay. So check this out. Um, let's get out of here. Okay. The purple diamondy shape. All right. I'm going to move this temporarily, but it shouldn't be a problem doing that. So purple diamondy shape, I think, is on the bottom at the moment, or is it? I don't think it's that. I should be able to rotate you, maybe. There's the purple diamondy shape. Cool. Now, if I connected an Ender IO conduit to that, okay. Now, here's the deal. I also want to make sure I'm chunk loading my area because. Um, so let's claim some chunks here. Boop, boop, doop, boop, boop. Um, if the hyper box is inside a claimed and chunk loaded chunk, okay, um, I'm gonna have to increase that number. Uh, if the if the hyper box is inside a chunk loaded chunk, the hyper box is gonna be chunk loaded as well. So you can you can rest assured that since I chunk loaded this area out here, what's inside should also be chunk loaded. Okay, so um, did you? Yep, that's mob farm, all right. Where did uh where did thing go? Is my inventory desync maybe? Powered spawner. Where did you go, powered spawner? It shouldn't be a problem to pick up and move that, right? Oh. Oh, it is. That's weird. All right, so I'm cheating because I definitely lost. I lost my spawner, dude. All right, not my fault. Not my fault. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't lose it. Buggy bug mod bug happened. Uh, but fixed now. Uh, so updating the pack. To the latest version of the Dial 20 pack fixed it for me. Uh, we actually released a pack version update earlier today, and I was recording my previous episode, who I hadn't updated yet. So then I ran into this bug, and I went and told the mod author, and he's like, yeah, I think I fixed that in the latest version. Are you on the old one? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, give that a shot. Oh, okay. So then, yeah. So now, moving this dude, and you can see my blocks stayed in there as would be expected. So yeah, that absolutely should not have happened. That was definitely a bug, but it is now fixed. So just make sure you're on the latest version of a mod before you go reporting bugs like me, like Bad Direwolf. So with that said, I'm just gonna have to cheat my way into a new uh, a new thing. Uh, so I'm gonna need to get another uh, spawner, powered spawner from here. So I'm gonna need a couple of solarium ingots and an insult chassis. I'm just gonna do this way. Uh, in sold chassis, and let's put this on the no, no spawner. It's called okay. Um, powered spawner, four solarium, and a vibrant crystal. I mean, we still have four solarium in there, so I probably don't need to make more of those. But I will grab my two vibrant crystals because those are expensive, right? And then you can be, and then a Z logic doohickey. And just make sure that it's the Enderman one that I just did. And now we've got our powered Enderman spawner back. And then I will stop cheating. Uh, it's not really cheating if you're working around a bug. Remember. So let's try that out again, right? So I'm gonna come over here. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna rotate this guy so that he's got the diamond on top, right? And then that diamond should go here, right? So he's got no energy at the moment. Oh, I should get myself a capacitor. Because that was also in the thing that got that got voided. Uh, so capacitor, good to go. He has no energy at the moment, right? So now I pop out of the machine. And we hook up some energy to it. And that should power my buddy. Now, if we pop in there, he should be getting energy. Look at that. How cool is that? That is super cool. I like it, right? So now, 
Uh, we can, and that should work for items and fluids and redstone, I assume, and energy and all that stuff. So you can, you can, you can interact with, with all the sides and that's pretty neat. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set that up. So let me show the range that this is going to spawn in, right? Uh, I'm not sure if larger capacitors equal larger range, but I should probably have you be enabled on redstone signal. Cool. And then we'll do some redstone-y stuff with that. Probably. Cool. All right. So with that said, let's get some machines. Right. I'm not, I'm not close enough to my network that I can do that. So let's get out of here. And let's get some, uh, let's get something to build around the stuff. Cool. So I actually have an idea. I'm going to try something completely different. I was going to go mob grinding utils and use this mob masher, but I want to try something different. And there happens to be a mod in the pack that might... I don't know. I haven't played with this mod at all. I have no idea how it works. I don't know nothing about it. We're going to play with it today and learn about it. And if it works, cool. And if it doesn't, we'll find something else to do with this mod. Does that sound cool? I want to check out Modular Golems. Uh, Modular Golems apparently has uh, a couple different types of golems. One of them, um, I think, is going to be like able to attack things uh, and kill them and, and get their drops. Uh, I don't know if it'll pick up the items. I think it can pick up items, but it doesn't look like you can like bind it to a chest or anything. So I'll probably need to do some kind of vacuum thing to pick up the items, but I can handle that. Um, but the cool thing about that is it won't need to worry about where the mobs spawn because I think the golem would like chase and hunt and kill the mobs for you. I think. I don't know. Uh, again, no idea how this mod works. We're going to find out together uh, as we learn together. Okay, but it looks cool and it's a new mod to play with, right? So first things first, I'm going to get my, my powered spawner. I actually made the tier three capacitor because I'm curious how fast it is um, and how many endermen it's going to spawn, right? So it's definitely not, I wouldn't call it fast, right? It's not apotheosis fast. Let's put it that way. Um, but that's okay. I can, I can handle not being apotheosis fast. Okay, you're going to drop one element in the world for me, huh? Now, when you're snared, can you not teleport? Or stop that? <laughs> Take that, Enderman. That is kind of cool. Uh, so it's definitely faster than a tier 1 uh, or tier 2 capacitor, but it's still also relatively slow. Okay, so now that you're turned off, you should stop spawning mobs, and that's cool. Let's go check out modular golems. Does that sound like a plan? And for now, I'm just going to throw down a chest um, and put all my mob masher stuff in it because we may want it, right? My concern is I don't see anything that allows me to do looting upgrades. So my concern is this might be really slow uh, without any kind of looting upgrades because if the spawner only spawns one enderman at a time and it seems to be like every like 10 or 20 seconds and then we don't have looting, we'll see. Um, also the golems might be killable, so that also might be a challenge. But again, we're going to check out a fun mod today. I don't know if it's going to be perfect, but we're going to have fun. And that's the point of playing the video game. All right, so let's start with the basics. To craft a golem, use the stone cutter to cut metal golem templates into required parts. So I think what I want to get is I have a stone cutter, uh, and I think this is the metal golem template. So if I put that in here, aha. Dog golem body, human golem body, and metal golem body. All right, I think first thing is to understand those different types of golems, right? So metal golem is similar to vanilla iron golem. Other than being fixed in anvil, it can also be healed directly by using ingots matching the body. Metal golem can be equipped with special armors using command wand. Okay. Now this is interesting. Uh, I may be retracting what I said about no fortune. Uh, or looting upgrades, because the humanoid golem is a player-like golem. It can use armor, melee weapons, bows, crossbows, trident, and shield. So would it be fair to assume that if I gave him a looting sword, he would do looting? I would expect that to be the case, but I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe, possibly, perhaps. I think it's worth a try, right? I think we should absolutely be trying that, and probably will. Um... So that's probably the one I'm going to want, is the humanoid one. Yeah, that seems cool. Now, uh, that, that seems pretty neat overall. Yeah, okay. And then there's the dog golem, which we're going to have to try out. I mean, how could we not? Dog golem is a wolf-like golem. It runs fast and has high attack. Right-click with an item or shift right-click to make it sit down uh, with an empty hand to retrieve the golem. And you can also ride it with the rider wand or right-click dog with the humanoid golem to add a passenger. That's cool. 
Use the size upgrade to add more passenger. That's cool. That's neat. So let's do let's do the humanoid one, right? So I'm gonna need a humanoid golem body, arms, and legs. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're gonna get. So I assume I'm gonna need three sets of these, right? Um, one for the humanoid golem body, one for the humanoid golem legs, and one for the humanoid golem arms, right? And then we just combine them in, uh, okay, nope, that's not what we do. Then, then we combine them in an, an anvil with, uh, the appropriate ingots. So, like Tinker's Construct, there's different materials you can build your golem out of. And I think you can mix and match. So you can have, like, copper legs with iron body and netherite arms or something, something, something. Um, and and there's, there's different attributes you'll get, uh, as you can see here. Um, so, let's see. So, humanoid iron golem body is 20 health. Arms seem to affect attack damage, and legs seem to affect health. Okay, cool. Um, are all of them NJEI? It looks like most of them are, so that's cool. Andesite alloy would be two points. So if we look at arms, for example, uh, we can see andesite is two and a half. Metal brass is eight. That's cool. Now those are golem arms. Those are golem arms. We want the humanoid arms, right? Uh, so that'll be plus 1.5 for andesite, plus 4.8 for brass, copper is 3, uh, looks like there's a twilight forest integration here, which is kind of cool, uh, gold is, uh, slower but more damage, iron is more damage, uh, night metal's cool, netherite is a lot more damage but also slower, and a bigger sweep range too. Railway, I think that's a crate integration. Oh, Skulk is nine attack damage. If we get some Skulk, that would be cool. Uh, so I think I'm going to start with basically Iron, because I think Iron's like a pretty good middle of the road, good place to be. Um, in general, you can read through the book here to figure out what the different attributes do. For example, Gold Golem parts feature health regeneration while having very low stats for all attributes. Uh, Skulk is like really good overall. It's like one of the best ones you can get. Zinc is like okay, but not great. I think iron is like your very much middle of the road way to go. So that's what I'm going to go with for now. So I think we anvil it, right? Boom and boom. Sweet. Okay. And then you. Looks like we need a little bit more experience for that. Yeah, I'll do across the board iron just because I don't know what I'm doing yet. And then uh, how much do I need for this guy? Another one. Okay. Yeah, and that'll be that'll be cool. And then we combine them into a human golem holder, humanoid golem holder with body, arms, and legs of iron, uh, and that's pretty cool. Sweet, a brand new golem. You, but tougher. Ha <laughs> ha, that's awesome. That is very cool. Um, now, can I, like, can I, like, can I, like, change up stuff? I don't know. I don't know if I can, like, swap in and out different legs or whatever. I guess we could probably find out uh, real quick if I got more clay. Do I have more clay? I do. Okay. So if I had, like, a humanoid golem arms, right... And we wanted to try a different set of arms. Let's just, uh, I don't think super matters. I'm just, I'm just playing right now to figure it out. Do I have anything that like matches any of this? I don't think I have Skulk stuff yet. So I could get like just copper arms, right? Let's just, uh, I should really have my anvil next to my experience. So I don't have to keep running back and forth. That seems like really smart, right? So can I combine you and swap them out? It doesn't look like it, but there might be a way I just haven't finished reading the book yet. So we'll find out. Um, so that's neat. Okay. Um, and then upgrading the golem. To upgrade the golem, craft the upgrades and apply them in an anvil. Upgrade can provide modifiers of golem, which add these special abilities or improve stats. Golem can only have limited upgrades, and each modifier has its own max level. Okay. Uh, use grindstone to remove all golem upgrades. Blast golem holder item with explosion to retrieve upgrades. Okay. 
Don't know what that sentence means, but we'll figure it out. If you have Crate installed, you can use Deployer to automatically apply upgrade without experience cost. Oh, that's cool. That's kind of neat. So use the grindstone to remove upgrades. So if we put him in there, we should, I assume... Oh, that's not a grindstone. That's a stone cutter. Close, though, right? Close. I don't love that. That doesn't look good, right? Okay. So I guess we don't have any upgrades yet, so that's why we're not seeing it. But worth checking out in a moment. Uh, retrieval wand. Right-click golems to retrieve golem back into inventory as if the player right-clicks it by empty hand. Right-click in air to retrieve all golems in a radius of 20 blocks. Shift right-click to retrieve golems the player points to up to 64 blocks away. Oh, that's cool. So in theory, I should be able to, like, stick this dude in the world. And hey, what's up, humanoid golem? How's it going? Nice to meet you. You are... I, for some reason in my mind, I thought he'd be really tiny, and he's not. And then shift right click to pick him up. Oh my goodness, what's that? Oh, he has health now. He has health now. Look at that. Okay, sweet. Uh, and there's no modifiers. Shift to show modifier values. Okay, neat. Oh, uh, what were the other things I could do with the humanoid golem? Uh, right click golem with equipment to equip, and shift right click the golem to unequip all. Uh, if you shift right click with an empty hand, the golem will retrieve naked as well. Right click the golem with an empty hand to retrieve the golem with equipment stored within. Okay, got it. So like, for example, if I wanted to give him a sword, right? Like a fancy diamond sword, let's say. I could do so by right clicking him. And I could right click with an empty hand and he retain. Look at that, it even shows the iron sword. That is cool. Look at that, it's right there on the little golem. See his iron sword that he's hanging on to? That is super cool. Shift right click will pick him up without any gear. So it'll remove all his gear, drop it in the world, and then you can pick it up as a player. Um, and then uh, there was something else to remove gear, wasn't there? And I think that's about it. Yeah, so that's just, that's cool. That is super cool. And I assume I can throw looting on this guy and sharpness for that matter to be even cooler. Uh, so now the command wand, right click to switch between modes for the golems. Following mode, which is the default mode, they will follow the player. Guarding mode, golem will stand around a region as if the player stands there. Center point is the position of the golem when it's set to this mode. Golems in standing mode will not move. Uh, shift right click humanoid golem to configure equipment. Okay. Attack entity with this wand to call all your surrounding golems to attack that entity. Golems in guarding standing mode cannot change dimensions and will switch back to following mode when retrieved. So this is what I want, right? Like I want to get a command dude, command wand, okay? And that'll let me control what he does. And I'm hoping he'll stand there and attack any entities nearby, right? That's my, that's my hope if I put him in that mode. Summon mode, right click to summon a golem on a target block from your offhand or your inventory. Shift right click to summon all golems from your inventory around you. That's cool. So you can like deploy all your golems like an army and then you can use the, the retriever wand to, to bring them all back. That's cool. So ten, you don't really need either of those, right? They're just for mass deploying and retrieving of your golems. That's super cool. Uh, right click a go dog golem to write it and a config card. Right click golem to set config. Right click again to remove. When in offhand, wands would only target golems having this config. Okay. Uh, rename the item and right click to set the item name as a config name. All card on the same owner and same color are in this fact the same config. Um, I don't know. I think we're gonna have to look at this one and figure it out ourselves. Okay. We should make one of those. Uh, modular golems card. Right click to initialize config. So I'm gonna need you. And I'm gonna need more you. I'm just curious what config options there are. Like, hey, uh, default mode. Oh, there we go. Insert to set config. Aha! So we can put the golem in there and it'll set the configuration. This is the con general config and this is item pickup config. This is very cool. This is very cool. Whenever I see a new mod, I wonder like how polished and good it's going to be. I'm like, I'm like, is this like brand new? 
Or like, is this like, this is very cool so far. Um, summon to pointed position, summon to original position, lock interactions on or off, default mode follow, wander, stand. Okay, that's neat. That's super neat. But I don't think we need that. Like, that's just like, hey, whenever I summon them, put them in this mode. So again, I think that's more useful for when you want to summon a bunch. So I could have like five golems in my inventory, right? And I could configure them all to be in one of those modes. And when I and, and then when I summon them all, they'll be in that default position. Doesn't that? That is cool. All right. So so then you, oh, look at that. You can see his, oh, that is super nice. We'll wander around. Okay, cool. And then I can shift right click Golem Equipment, Golem Attributes, Curios. He can have Curios? That is cool. Come on. This mod is awesome. Every, every interaction I have with this mod, I get more and more excited by it. I am liking it. Okay, cool. I need to go get, I need to go get uh, looting on the sword. That's what I need to get. That's what I need to get. So I'm going to pop over here real quick and get some looting going on. Uh, what was it for looting? I think it's emeralds, right? Uh, so let me get my Ars Nouveau book and remember how looting works. Because I want looting on the sword that the golem's going to use. For sure, right? I mean, very yes. Very yes. So enchanting looting is going to 100% be uh, uh, earth essences, emeralds, and source blocks. So I'll be back in a minute once I get this sword up to looting three. And that's going to be his sword that he's going to use to kill Enderman for me. All right, so that should be looting three. I'm going to skip the sharpness for now. I just want to play with these before I get really too deep into making all the gear for them. But that should be super cool. So now I should be able to give you that sword. And then if I right click you to pick you up, you will still have it. Okay. Now there's three upgrade slots remaining. I don't know if different tiers of golems have different numbers of upgrade slots. But let's let's look at those real quick before we move into them. Um, so some upgrades you might want. Um... This one, when Golem set or switch attack target, it will ring its bell, attract all enemies within 48 blocks, and apply a glow effect. That's kind of cool. Uh, Carmenite will turn invisible and invincible for a short time after being hurt. Uh, Diamond upgrades adds armor value to Golems and improve Golem survivability by a bit. I might want I might want the uh, uh, armor upgrade. So let's let's make a note of what uh, upgrades we might want. Diamond upgrade that's going to give you armor up. Um, there's also uh, Emerald Upgrade. Damage dealt to Elegers will increase by a lot. I don't think we're going to be fighting Enagers. Uh This will let you see mobs through walls. Don't need that uh, for now. Have Knockback. No thanks. Fiery Upgrade. Deal more damage to those who are not immune to fire. Uh, fire Immune makes the Golem immune to fire. Float. Floats in water. Uh, increase Golem Health Regeneration by one level, max five. Okay. Uh, by two levels, max five. Okay. Enchanted Golden Apple Upgrade. I might want to look at those and see what those recipes look like in a sec. Uh, that's super cool. Ironwood Upgrade. More healing bonus in Twilight Forest. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of these upgrades. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of Twilight Forest integrations, which is kind of cool. Uh, repeated Potion Upgrades. Meta Upgrade Talented. First of each kind of upgrade with blue arrows will no longer consume upgrade slots up to four. Already consumed slots will be returned. New blue upgrades can be applied even when there are no slots left. Multiple blue arrow upgrades of the same kind would still consume slots. That's kind of cool. Meta upgrade talented. I want to add that. That seems like a very powerful. That's like a that's like a you get way more upgrades kind of upgrade. Um, netherite upgrade. A lot of toughness and survivability. Pickup lets them pick items up, but it's confusing, and I need to look into that one a little bit. It looks like it's only going to give it to players if they're nearby. Um, or put it in a specific mod called L2 Backpack, which I don't know is in the pack. I don't think so. I mean, there's the sophisticated backpacks, but I don't know if that's the same thing, right? Um, what other upgrades might be cool to look at? Um, player immune potion upgrade slowness inflicts three seconds of slow to mobs. Oh, that's cool. Weakness, wither, I assume those ocean also do the same things. Quartz, I'm gonna say is, is, a, is a damage upgrade. Uh, so we might wanna look at that one. Uh, recycling upgrade. Golem drops repairable golem holder with zero health on death. The owner, if the owner is present, the holder will return to owner inventory instead. I kind of want that one. Uh, I'm worried about the icon on it because it looks like it might be expensive. Uh, yep, Totem of Undying. <laughs> I had a feeling it would, uh, the picture had a Totem of Undying on it, so I suspected it required a Totem of Undying to craft. Uh, normally when they die, 
Uh, I think they drop like uh, a component of themselves, but they aren't horrible to craft anew. At least the iron one is. If I got like a netherite upgrade, like Gollum, I might want to put that on there. Um, ride upgrade uh, for Dog Gollum only lets them uh, increase health, speed, and jump strength. Sweet. Size upgrade makes them bigger. And uh, it like boosts speed, health, and attack range. That's cool. Movement speed. Uh, I might I might need a movement speed upgrade because Dyer always likes movement speed upgrades and that might be cool. Sponge upgrade. Golem takes less explosion damage and any explosions hurting the Golem will not break blocks. That's kind of cool. Uh, swim upgrade. They can swim in water. Immune to thunder. All right, I think those are the main ones I might want. So let's see what I can get here. Definitely let's give them a diamond upgrade, right? So there's an empty upgrade base and then you can throw a diamond upgrade and that's pretty cool. And that'll give him some armor. Now, I can also equip him with armor armor. Like, I can give him straight up diamond armor and leggings and all that stuff. Like, I'm pretty good on, on diamonds, right? I can, I, can, I can give my little buddy here a full set of armor, can I? I feel like I can. I feel like he, he deserves a full armor upgrade, right? Uh, golden apple upgrade will let him heal. That shouldn't be too bad. Regenerate himself, I guess. Regeneration up, plus one golem regeneration. I don't know what his default is. We're going to experiment a little bit and find out, but I'm definitely going to have that ready. Uh, and the enchanted one just requires an enchanted golden apple, which in this pack requires blocks of gold um, or some other things that I don't feel like getting into right now. So I don't have that much gold. I'm going to hold off on that. Meta upgrade talented. Oh, yeah, that's expensive. Uh, you need a dragon head and you need nether stars. So that one's probably not happening anytime soon. Quartz upgrade I will look at, though, because more damage is always good. We'll give that one a go. And, and I think you can have multiples, right, of these. Damage up one. So does that... Okay, I see. So you put it in an anvil to apply it. Cool. Recycle upgrade, that one. And then speed upgrade is just a rabbit's foot. I have rabbit's feet. But I use up all my upgrades. I... I'm going to hold off on the speed upgrade. I think we're cool for now, right? So then we take our golem buddy and we give him the upgrade. Okay, cool. I got you. So it's 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 four. Uh, is it always four? It looks to be always four. But it might be more once I throw a few gala upgrades on him. So I'm going to give him the sword upgrade, right? And then uh, if I wanted this, that's going to be eight now. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. All right, I'm going to hold off on the regen, but now it's 12 for that, okay? Uh, but I will give him some armor. So I think I just right-click the armor onto him. Dude, what is up? That is super cool. And you can see uh, remaining upgrade slot one, armor up one, damage up one. I'm going to assume that I can throw another damage upgrade on there without um, too much fuss, right? So if I put him in here, put it in the right order, I assume. Yeah, and that'll give me damage upgrade two. Cool. And it'll go from 6.5 attack damage to 8.5 attack damage. That's kind of cool. That's, that's super cool. Okay, now could I do this? No, I wasn't sure, I was just trying. So that, 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 and then let's give you, yeah, the second damage upgrade. Um, and I guess there's a, oh, is he, is he full on upgrades now? Uh, remaining upgrade slot zero. Okay, fair enough. Now, if I wanted to, I could grindstone him and that would give me the upgrades back or like I lose them all. I lose them all. So that's a note. Note. Heh. <laughs> Doesn't look like you get them back. Uh, unless, unless I misread something in the book, there, there might be a way to get them back. How do we get them back? Uh, upgrades... Blast Golem Holder with item with explosion to retrieve upgrades. So I guess I hit, like, I, I literally, like, put TNT on the ground, drop this in the world, and then I'll get the upgrades back? Maybe. All right, let's go try this dude out. Like, enough, enough, enough having fun. All right, so you're going to do this, and I'm going to make sure command mode is set to wander around. I don't know what range he'll wander in, but it looks like he's wandering. He's patrolling. Right, and here comes an Enderman. Now is he gonna, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. 
That is exceedingly cool. And he'll just wander. Now, he's not healing at the moment. And that's a little bit of a frustration for me. Because uh, I, I did not install the regeneration upgrade. Oh, look at that. And he gets, like, angry at the golem, too. He's like, I am all about killing that golem immediately. Now, does he repair himself at all over time? Or not really? Because he doesn't look like he's repairing. Right? Uh, 34.75, 86% health. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pick you up with a right click. And we're going to try this explode the dude to get his stuff back thing. But that is cool. All right. Now, in fairness, we also did three... Three Endermen we killed, and we definitely got a lot of Ender Pearls and Ender Pearl Fragments, which tells me that looting is working. Would you agree? I would agree. I would say looting is working, and that's super neat. All right. I am liking Golems, man. They are they are spiffy. Uh, now, I'm curious what this, uh, what this regeneration guy is going to look like, so let's get some TNT. And let's go blow something up. Uh, now, I really hope I don't lose my Golem. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to, just in case, I'm going to shift right click him, which is going to cause him to drop all his gear and armor, okay? Uh, and then I could probably put mending on them, maybe? Uh, there's something in there about him picking up experience and all that, but we'll see. But if I if I go over here, is there a tiny TNT? There is. Applied Energistics has a nice tiny TNT. Let's do that one and see if it works. So it says blow up. Let's make sure you're off for a sec. Blow him up with an explosion, and you'll get your upgrades back. Oh. You do, but I suspect that also killed my golem. Yes. Okay. So if you blow him up, you get your upgrades back, but you lose your golem. If you uh, if you don't blow him up, uh, actually, hole filler is what I want. Do I not have any hole fillers in here? All right. Well, we're gonna get some. Cool. Uh, if you don't blow him up. You can throw them in here and avoid all your upgrades. Got it? Cool. Okay. Uh, now, one more question. Can I do something like this to, like, no. It would be cool, but I guess there's a limit, right, how many upgrades you can have. So let's make another Iron Golem and make him real quick off camera, and then we're going to make sure he gets the Golden Apple upgrade, and we'll see how that works out. All right. New Humanoid Golem. Looking good. Okay. You're going to get equipped with your, with your gear. Actually, before I equip you, let's make sure that we upgrade you all the way. Uh, what I'm going to start with for now is just make sure he gets this dude, which is four levels. Okay. I definitely want him to have that. And I really wish I could get him more upgrades than, th than three. There's so many upgrades I want, and three just seems like such a small number. Right? Doesn't that seem like a small number? Um, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking damage up would be good. So how about one damage, one regen? Okay. And one armor. Okay. And that should be cool. Alright, so now you should be able to regenerate your health. Kill Endermen with this awesome sword. And he just like patrols around the area. So, like, forget creating a mob box that they get trapped in. They're stuck in this dimension, and this dude will just patrol around and kill them for me? I I'm on board, right? Go get him, bro. And look, he's regenerating. Look, his health is full. He's definitely regenerating faster than the Enderman can spawn. So now all I gotta do is set up a vacuum to pick up all these items. And we've got an Enderman farm. Ha -ha. I told you I was going to do it different, and I did it different. How's that? All right, so I'm a fan of modular golems. I want to see so much more out of this mod. Like, it is super cool. Uh, I don't know much about it. I don't know, like, what the feature plans are. If, if, it's, if that's all it's planned to have, it's awesome. If it plans to have even more than this, it's even more awesome. Uh, so I'm very happy with this mod. I think it's cool. I think it's super cool. I might, I might, I might even hire a golem to go kill wandering traders around my base. Just be like, take him down. That would be neat. Look at him go. He is a champ. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So we'll probably need some better, uh, like, gear that doesn't break because eventually that sword's gonna break, right? 
and that'll probably be a shame. Uh, but for now, it's wrapping up point. We'll deal with that. That's future Dyer's problem. Current Dyer is not too worried. Uh, for now, it's Dyer Wolf 20's signing off point. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Let's come back next time. And uh, yeah, that's a cool mod. And, and I'm going to try and figure out uh, if I can understand the upgrades a little bit better. Because I feel like you should be able to have more upgrades than just the few that I put on. But maybe I'm just not understanding it. Uh, or maybe like different tiers will have more upgrades. I, I'll, I'll, we'll find out. For now, wrapping up point. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.